Now, this is what the trumpet say. The trumpet sound. It say, come up here. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. That's what we call a summon. A summon. A summon is when God activates the volcano inside of you. And you just feel like praying. Maybe you are in the post office. You are in the office. You are in an executive meeting. Everyone is seated with their bow tie. And they are all confused because the figures do not tally. And then suddenly there's the volcano is activated. What is happening is that God is summoning you. But you see, even though he's summoning you, you are not going to experience heaven's transport mode until you yield. So the moment he was summoned, as he, he yielded to God, he was transported. So we have a summon here. Then the next thing we see here is transportation. Oh my God, you are still not with me. And the Bible says, and immediately I was before the throne. He did not move. See, oh my, are you there? Now, changing from one location to another location in the spirit doesn't require physical movement. No, no. See, now let's do something. I want us to clap all the claps for this week. Now, then we'll finish it and then we'll, we won't clap again. <laughs> So we'll finish clapping for the whole week. <laughs> when you change locations from one point to the other in the realm of the spirit, you don't need to move in the natural. You don't need to move. The spirit realm is not different from this physical realm in terms of distance. It is only different in terms of dimension. It is sitting in another dimension. And it is only the Holy Ghost that can take you through that dimension. So it's not about something that you did in the flesh. Or, no. I was in the spirit on the last day. That was his entry point. Are you there? As he was arriving the spirit, he was hearing a summon. Come on, be there! And he yielded. Instantly, the spirit transport mode took him. You will travel in the spirit first before you can travel the kind of journey that Philip did, that it was, it was taken from. You are still not with me. Are you with me? One of my desires is that I should, trans I should change the way Philip traveled. I want to use Philip's travel agency at least once in my lifetime. But, and just in case you desire like me, let me tell you the process. First of all, you must know the experience of what it means to travel spiritually. When Gehazi went to collect the gold that his master rejected, he came back home thinking he had a secret. And his master told him, did not my spirit go with you? His spirit was a surveillance camera that accompanied him to where he went to receive the wages of disobedience. The wages. Are you there? Yes. So he knows the experience of being carried by the Spirit into the journeys of God. I was in the Spirit. Can you tell when the volcano begins to erupt? Can you tell when there is a summon? Can you tell how it feels, the sign that God is calling you into a fast? Many of us have aborted our journeys. We have discarded our, our progression. You see, in heaven, we, have, we don't have now. We don't have yesterday. We don't have today. We have now. And this now is a perpetual continuum. The moment you are in the spirit, and the Holy Spirit brings you into the consciousness of a certain heavenly reality. 
you realize that that reality did not begin because you arrived the reality was existing before you came it's just like you using a straw if it's not connected to the liquid you are not sipping anything but the moment you put it into the liquid you begin to draw in something so my prayer every day is carry me holy ghost what is the source of prophecy he said prophecy does not have his origin with man it's not a function of the will of man but holy men of old they speak how did they speak because they were carried by the spirit the most glorious experience that a man can have is to be carried by the holy ghost when last did you plead with him carry me take me along that's one of the prayers of men that know the journeys of god and that's one major prayer we are praying tonight we are telling him what carry me because the realm of god is 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 all sufficient but the realm of man is insufficient god designed the journeys of man in such a way that you will find the insufficiency in the natural but you will find sufficiency in the supernatural so that the journey of man is a journey that requires that he will be looking upward all through his life because that's where his sustenance will come from that's where his sufficiency will come from a man that doesn't look upward is a man that has found confidence in the flesh and if God wants to help you what he will do to you is that he will confound your flesh by allowing a situation that is superior to the capacity of your flesh to overwhelm you it is not because he wants you in custody he just wants you to come into the knowledge of the fact that in in the flesh we are in, insufficient the Bible says it's the spirit that quicken it the flesh profits nothing it has already been judged in scripture that you can make no profit in the flesh so all true sons of light seek to be carried in the journeys of god are you still with me yeah i know you have a phd and i know you are a doctor you got the first degree from oxford Second from Harvard. Hallelujah. You sat with the best brains of our time in class, and sometimes you beat them. I'm aware of that. And I salute you for your effort. However, it is possible that your mental capacity might become a hindrance in the way of your journeys in the spirit because you have confidence in that which you have acquired by sowing seeds of knowledge in the soil of your soul it has blocked you from accessing the possibilities that exist in the spirit of god the bible says we are the circumcision and the circumcision is not the description of every single believer it is only those that have come to the point where they have no confidence in the flesh that the bible calls the circumcision we are the circumcision that worship God in spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus and we have no confidence in the flesh. A traveler that will journey in the journeys of prayer must have come to the point where he doesn't have confidence in anything that is of the flesh. If not, you will still look to the flesh as your stronghold. You will still respond from the flesh because you have confidence in it. So God needs to weaken your flesh by giving you a disappointment that your flesh cannot handle. When he, yes, it's not because he is wicked. He's just trying to show you that you, you have infirmity. And in King James Bible, the meaning of the word infirmity means sickness. That is God is saying, you are sick. I am sick. And the only one that can cure us is called the Holy Ghost. He's the one that exercises guardianship over the realm of God so when you begin to press in prayer he's the one that looks at your heart and see he will check to see and measure your effort to know if you are seeking God with all your heart 
if, if you have not gotten to that point, he won't allow you access. He will bring you to a place where you receive ventilation in the spirit, but he will deny you access because you are not seeking God with all of your heart. And the reason why you are not seeking is because you have confidence in your bank account. It, it, it holds pounds sterling. There's a chunk of pounds that you have stashed and you must have analyzed. Okay. Um, I get that property in Manchester. I get the one in Glasgow. Two in London. One in Cardiff. And whenever we say praise the Lord, it's going to make more meaning to me. You, 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 are, you are out of sync with what we are talking about here. Because your confidence is in something that is in the realm of the natural. The way God designed it is that your confidence should be in Him only. That's why sometimes believers experience misfortune. God is trying to remove the idol so that he can, he can seek him with all of his heart. Please help me preach to your neighbor. You need to do it with all of your heart. Number two, a spirit dimension is a place where the move of God in a certain texture is experienced continually you don't you don't create the that that realm the realm exists it's just that you are brought into it and the move of god keeps breaking out it keeps breaking out it keeps breaking out so there is breaking news in heaven every day if you come into that realm, are you there? Announcements are going on. Announcements are going on. Ordinations, impartations, scepters are being given out. Decrees in heaven. I say, ah, because of the activities of intercession in Botswana, for instance, and the intensity of intercession, they are making demands on heaven. Right there in the throne room, God has decreed and he has appointed a, a warden that will be in custody of a certain scepter, wielding kingdom authority and extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. Anytime you enter there, there's breaking news. And you see, the thing about God is this. God does not use words the way we do. For instance, if God were to come and say, You are a tall man. Who, if God says that, you will become tall. Tall to the extent to which he thinks tall is. Oh, you are not with me. <laughs> the first time words were used in the Bible, it was not for communication. It was for creation. God resides in, in a realm where he sustains an energy level that makes him such that when he speaks, what he says will become true. For he is not a man that he should lie. When you hear the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie, it doesn't mean because God is modest, is righteous, so he cannot lie. No. It means God dwells in an energy center such that when he speaks, anything he says becomes true. Now, because of that kind of power, he doesn't use words anyhow, the way you do. Are you with me? Yes. He doesn't use words anyhow. Because he knows that the moment he speaks, it will happen. So there's a realm, a place in God where decrees come from. These decrees determines people's seasons, the seasons over nations. The seasons for kings, the rise and fall of kings. These decrees determine how long men live and when they'll be cut off. That's a place where true power resides. And the activities of heaven that are occasioned by these decrees are ongoing, they are continuous, they are perpetual. 
It means if you hit heaven now, you will find breaking news. That's what I'm saying. And these breaking news are decrees that God has made that will shape the realm. It's supposed to shape the heavens and shape the earth. It is what determines who becomes the next prince in the arena of grace. Who becomes the miracle worker like Reinhard Bonkin to, to take the gospel from place to place. That is where it will come from. So in the layer of God, there is consistent activity that God wants you to become a partaker of. Are you there? Ah. Tomorrow, we will continue from there. Wow. Messages of this kind can only be by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This is spiritual intelligence that every believer must know to profit from the intimacy with the Holy Spirit. This is so powerful, practicable, and relatable for everyone who hears to start a journey of perpetual and eventual intimacy and yielding to the Holy Spirit. The utterance of this message, the wisdom, the intelligence, and the scriptural teaching of out of this world. I am greatly blessed and I believe you have been greatly blessed too. I welcome all my viewers to the commentary section of the Great Light channel and we don't preach here but bring to your notice again silent statement noted from the message that are worth ruminating and meditating upon again and again. The first statement that struck my heart is that even though God is summoning you, you are not going to experience heaven's transport mode until you yield to the summon. Everyone who wants to profit from the Holy Spirit must learn to yield to Him. It's those who yield by doing that get the blessings of instructions. Yielding to the summon of the Holy Spirit doesn't require physical movement. It's by submitting and giving yourself to be carried by the Holy Ghost. The summon of the Holy Spirit can demand fasting, prayer, giving, etc. from you. And if you don't yield, it means you are bought the journey and discard your progression of knowing God. The summer of the Spirit doesn't need physical energy. It's just to give yourself to be carried by the Spirit of Divine Realm, which is the Holy Spirit. The most glorious experience a man can ever have is to be carried by the Holy Ghost. The Divine Realm is all sufficient. It doesn't need the help of a man to be sustained, but the realm of man is insufficient and can't live wholly without the help of the Spirit Realm. This is designed to be so because God wants man to find sufficiency in the supernatural, which is why man must continually look unto God throughout his life for sustenance. Any man who doesn't look upward for help has found confidence in the flesh, but all true sons of light must seek to be carried by the Holy Ghost, which is why David cried out in Psalms 121 verses 1 and 2 that I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. It's only those who have no confidence in the flesh that can worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ. A man of prayer is a man who doesn't have confidence in the flesh. A man of prayer is a man who knows that he is full of infirmities and only the Holy Spirit can bring a cure for his infirmities, which is why he seeks God with all his heart. It is written in the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 13 that you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. He knows that his help will come from no other place than Zion, which is why he will plug in absolutely into Zion so that he can be helped by the Holy Spirit. God speaks at all times. He has instructions to give to his children per time, but he doesn't infringe on the will of his children. The moment you choose to be on God's side, then know that it is a call to be summoned by God, and it will be in your best interest to yield to the summon. This message is so powerful. There are many points to note but I hope you have been blessed by the few mentioned above. One of the ways to be a blessing to others is to share the message of this kind with them to be blessed also as you will. Try to share with friends and family, get them plugged into Zion and live a hidden life to the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening to my commentary and for watching. If you have not subscribed, I believe this is time to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video and drop a comment also. I would love to engage with you in the comment section. My name is Olawali Ayomide Ogunjobi, and by the grace of God, I am the Hadmi of the Great Light Channel. Remain blessed. Amen.